the law of cosines. This video tutorial explains how to apply the law of cosines to the two most common question types that students have to answer. And it goes hand in hand with a free worksheet that you can download from our website, mathwarehouse.com slash law of cosines. On that page you can find other practice problems, an interactive demonstration of the law of cosines, as well as a free worksheet with an answer key on this topic. Okay, well, let's look. Let's look at the general form of the law of cosines before we delve into some specific problems. The law of cosines relates the three sides of a triangle to the cosine of an angle. So there's a certain symmetry to this formula that you might notice. Whatever angle is on this side will have its opposite side over here. So if we're talking about angle A. We're going to be looking at a squared on the left side. Likewise, if it's the cosine of b on the right on the end, it's b squared here, cosine of cc. And then whatever side is not here goes in these slots. At the end of this tutorial, I'm going to we'll, we'll look at how this formula is completely consistent with the Pythagorean theorem, which you probably are already familiar with. All right, so let's look at this type of problem trying to find a side given to other sides and, an ang and the angle in between. This is problem one from the worksheet on the web page. Let's, let's do a step-by-step -step through that problem. And this is the easier type of problem. All right, we, um, we're just basically going to substitute into our formula and use our calculator. It's uh, going to pretty much be a piece of cake. We know that we can write a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cosine of a. And the reason that I chose this form is we're trying to find a, right? That's our goal. And we know b, c, and cosine of a. So it's really just a matter of substitution at this point. 42 squared plus 53 squared minus 2 times 42 times 53 times the cosine of 115. a squared equals all that. So you just punch this in your calculator. a squared equals 6,454. And to find the length of a, you just take the square root of 6,454. And since we're rounding to the nearest, nearest hundredth, we will round to 80.34. I got this from my calculator. Obviously, I couldn't do that in my head. So these sort of problems are very straightforward. You're um, given two sides and the angle in between, and you really just substitute into the formula. And the key is just to remember, even if we knew angle B, it wouldn't have helped us here. We needed, since we were interested in angle and side A, we needed the angle opposite of A. All right, so let's look at another problem like that, one of the easier types. Here. We need to find E. And if we write our formula out, we know that E squared equals 6 squared plus 18 squared minus 2 times 6 times 18 cosine of 88. Again, even if we knew how large f or d was, it wouldn't help us because we're trying to find e. So the only angle we're interested in is the one opposite of it, which goes right here. Again, just punch this into your calculator to get what e squared is. e squared, in this case, ends up being... Um, 79.897. And to get E, you just take the square root of that number. 79.897, which equals 18.77 when you round it to the nearest hundredth. All right, so very straightforward. Just all you have to keep in mind is the side that goes on the left is opposite the it's um, goes with the angle opposite of it here in the formula. 
and then you just basically substitute in and punch it into your calculator. A little trickier. is a problem like this. Here we're given three sides and we're going to find the measure of angle K. So if the angle we are interested in or the is, is K, the side that will be the side of the triangle that will be on the left hand side of the equation must be opposite of K or 23. So we're just going to substitute this into our formula. 23 squared equals 37 squared plus 16 squared minus 2 times 37 times 16 times cosine of k. Let's simplify this a little bit. 23 squared is 529. And 37 squared is... 1,369 plus 16 squared, which becomes 256 minus 2 times 37 times 16, your, cal your calculator will tell you is uh, 1184 cosine of k. And we can combine 1364 and 256 to get 1625 here. And right now, we are at a, a point that causes many students trouble. Many students incorrectly want to combine, to do a subtraction here. So if you just remember your order of operations, you realize you can't subtract, you cannot subtract 1625 and 1184. That would violate PEMDAS, or order of operations, right? These two have higher precedence. So you can't separate these at this point. So let's subtract 1625 from both sides. Let's see how that helps us out. And we'll get 1096 on the left, which equals negative 1184 cosine k on the right. Now we can divide both sides by 1184, negative 1184, and you will get cosine k equals negative uh, equals positive 0.92567. This equals cosine k. So to get k, we're going to use inverse cosine. And K will end up equaling 22 degrees. Okay, so it's a little trickier when you have to find a an angle given three sides. You start off the same as the uh, other type of problem. You basically just substitute into the formula, keeping in mind that the side on the left is opposite the angle that you're trying to find. And also be careful of this step here that I flagged for you earlier this is a common source of error among students. You must subtract the 1625 first in this case. You must subtract 1625, otherwise you'd be violating PEMDAS, and from there you just end up using the cosine inverse to get the um, get the angle. All right, well, let's take a second to look at how the law of cosines is completely consistent with the Pythagorean theorem. Here we have a right triangle, and let's see what happens when we apply the law of cosines to find x. We know from the Pythagorean theorem, you could just say x squared equals 73.24 squared plus 21 squared. And we could say this because in this case, unlike our other triangles, in this case we're dealing with a right triangle. Well, let's see how the law of cosines will give you the exact same thing. <coughs> Using the law of cosines, we could say x squared equals 73.24 squared plus 21 squared minus... 2 times 73.24 times 21 cosine of 90 degrees. And it looks like we might have an issue here. I mean, how could these two equations actually be the same? But it turns out they are because the cosine of 90 is 0. 
So this entire term on the right becomes zero. So the law of cosines is consistent with the good old Pythagorean theorem, except we can use the law of cosines for non-right triangles. So that was what was neat about the, being able to solve those earlier problems. We did not need a right triangle, and we could relate the sides and the angles. Okay, that's it for this tutorial in applying the law of cosines. Remember, if you would like a free worksheet and with an answer key, more practice problems, visit us on the web, mathwarehouse.com slash law of cosines.